Hello there everybody and welcome to another edition of Andy's Shed Live. This is episode 7 for Sunday the 23rd of April 2017. Hello there, how are you? And uh, I hope you're having a, a great day once again. I've had a busy one today. I've been over in Sheffield at the Collectors Club event today and I even went to Eckington this morning to March Lane Car Boot Sale at uh, Eckington where I, I got a few goodies but more of that later. Right, um, for the eagle-eyed amongst you, you will have noticed that we were missing last week. Uh, we didn't have an episode on air last week. We, we, we had a few technical gremlins that, uh, that got into the works last week, so unfortunately we couldn't do an episode for you. But uh, we're back today and uh, we, we should be okay from this point on, I hope. Right, I'm just going to adjust the camera a little bit because you look, you look a little bit fuzzy today. I'm, I'm hoping that that has that improved it or has that made it worse? I'm trying to work it out which way I should go. <laughs> um, I think that's improved it a little bit. Right, down to business for today. And the main thing that we have got to do today is uh, we're doing a viewer request today. Um, because there's one thing that we've been asked to do, um, basically, more than any other. Uh, one or two people have suggested this. They said that they love the uh, the telephone stuff about, about stripping down the dials and things. And they said they can find lots of stuff about British telephones, about... Uh, about British telephone 706s and 746s, you know, you know the the ones that, that basically, um, the ones that basically look something like uh, like this one here. I'm going to show you like this one. So they can find lots lots of information on that sort of uh, telephone on the internet, but they can't find much information about trim phones. So. Could I do a strip down of a trim phone? Well, always want to oblige. Here we have a trim phone. So this is what we are going to be doing today. We're going to do a strip down of the old trim phone and um, basically show you how, uh, how that works. So without further ado, let's get on with it. Right, here we are. Here's the trim phone. And as you can see, it's all wrapped up at the moment. So the first thing we'll do is unwrap it. Now, the thing to note about a trim phone, and I'm talking about original trim phones here, not the uh, not the modern reproductions, because there are companies that make modern reproductions of trim phones, so you do have to be a bit careful. But I'm talking about an original one here. Um, and when you look at an original one that's got a proper trim phone cord on it, you will see on the end of the cord and this one's already been converted to plug and socket as you'll see from that but on the end of the cord there's a curly section near where it plugs into the wall and that is basically because trim phones were designed to be held in the hand and walked around with so they put that curly section on the cord so that you could uh, so that you could move around with it in your hand and uh, and do it that way. So right, let's get this all unwrapped. Okay, here we go. Right, so there it is unwrapped. I'm going to let the cord dangle down on the floor. So here is our trim phone, as you can see, and. This one was originally a London phone by the looks of it because it's got a dial card in it that starts with an 01 there. Don't know if you can see that, but that starts with an 01. And the dial card there. So we know it's an old London phone. Right, so what do we have to do to take one of these apart? Well... It's basically a case of taking a number of screws and things out, like it is with any other phone. And to do this, I think I'm going to go and get my new little box of tricks. Just bear with me one second. This is my new box of tricks from Eckington Car Boot Sale this morning. 
this was 50 pence so we're going to see how good this is now today um, as I say this was 50p from the car boot sale and basically what it is if I can get it under the camera there it's a little plastic thing with a little screwdriver in it it unscrews like that and there's loads of screwdriver bits around here and a little screwdriver in the end there and you take a screwdriver bit and the beauty of this magic device is the bits are magnetic so they just hold in there and don't fall out which is pretty good and they're also a bit longer than screwdriver bits often are as well so I'm going to give this a try and see if it's any good or not now bear in mind it was 50p from the car boot sale so it might not be all that great but we'll uh, we'll see how we get on shall we and also by the way I'm if you're wondering why I'm looking all over the place it's because I'm just checking for dropped frames on the live stream if you're watching this live if you watched our last episode live about the pound coins a couple of weeks ago you will realize that there were a few problems with the uh, with the stream we had we had streaming issues um, with that one and so we're uh, being a bit wary of it today so all right we'll get back to it then right the first thing we've got to do is get the center of the dial and what you would normally do or what uh, what bt or telecom or the gpo did in uh, in days gone by was they got the centers of these dials by putting a little sticky suck a little sucker thing on there and uh, pulling it off with the sucker now there are various ways you can do this I normally do it with a little bit of tape but I'm just going to see if I can do it with this blue tacky stuff so let's just put it on there and give it a pull and there it comes okay so that's got that off with a little bit of blue tack now that's your uh, your cover basically for the dial label and this thing is the dial label and you just take that out it's not glued in or anything like this it shouldn't be and that will reveal a screw in the middle of there and what you do is you undo that screw and this is where we find out how rubbish these screwdrivers really are oh no it's doing it it's doing it just about Maybe I need a different bit that's a bit uh, narrower than that one. Let's try this one. Goes in the hole a bit better. Oh, that's better. We take that screw out of there. And then you can lift this finger wheel off. and You've got to slide it from under the finger stop. But you've also got to lift it up a bit first. It engages on a couple of little pegs there. So you have to lift it up and slide it from under the finger wheel and there you go and I'll put the screw in the middle of the thing there so we don't lose it right the next thing that we have to remove is this little spring clip so that comes off like so so we'll put that on there as well And at this point, you can get the dial face off if you want to. And the easiest way is just tip the fold upside down and it will just fall off in your hands. And this is where things differ a bit from a normal 746 or a 706 because trim phones used to have illuminated dials. And the way the dials illuminated was by this tube that goes around here now this is a little glass tube that was basically originally radioactive it was a material called tritium or something like that I hope I've pronounced that right it was this, this tritium stuff and it was radioactive and it glowed 
as, as all comic radioactive things do if you ever watch like the simpsons or anything um but yeah the, the tritium really did glow with with radioactivity and basically that is what gave the dial its its glow that is what made it kind of light up at night now before people say oh it's radioactive it's radioactive and the gpr had a big scare about the radioactivity of these in the 70s and that and and that i have heard rumors about there was at one time a big skip full of trim phone dials because they'd all been recalled and had all the tritium tubes taken out of them um, and sent back out without tubes in because the tubes are radioactive the half-life of tritium is basically so short that it was pretty harmless when it was new anyway because the radioactivity was so low in it there, 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 was, there was very very little radioactivity it was background pretty much but the half-life of it is so short that now it's completely inert more or less and that's why trim phones don't glow these days that's why they've all lost their glow because the half-life of the tritium um, has got less and less and less for the radioactivity so that's why they don't glow anymore that's why your trim phones don't glow now there are various people out there experimenting with trying to find new ways of putting the glow back into a trim phone doing it with leds and things but uh, but i don't know uh, i don't think anybody's been successful so far right the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the case off the phone because i've not had this one apart yet so you're seeing this as i'm seeing it and to get the case off we undo this plastic screw just here there's a little white plastic screw and what we do is we take that off so we just unscrew that like so till it comes loose you can pull it out if you want to but you don't have to and then the case should just lift off lift from the back first from the high end of the case first and then slide it a little bit that away so you lift the back end of it and slide and then that's how you get it off because there are two little things under there that you see that engage in a couple of slots in the front here and if you just lift it straight up you'll break those off so that's why you slide it okay so we'll leave that screw in there and we'll put the case to one side and now you can see the innards of a trim phone now it looks a lot different to a 706 or a 746 when you first look at it and you you wonder what's going on um but basically it's not terribly dissimilar and the circuit in it is actually very similar um it's just laid out in a different fashion because the case is a different shape now this thing here this is your hook switch for the trim phone now because of the way the hook switch works in a trim phone that with the hook not depressed there that is actually on hook when you press that switch down it's off hook okay so that is with the receiver on the hook that is with the receiver in your hand i.e off hook so it's the opposite to what you would think and the reason it's the opposite to what you would think is revealed in the inside of the case here because what happens is that micro switch there is operated by this sort of plastic contact here just just here where my finger is there and 
you'll see that when you press the hook switch down like that it's on the other end of a kind of seesaw arrangement so when I press the hook switch down that goes up if I can do it there you go so I press the hook switch down and this, this is the bottom of the hook switch just here you know this is where it comes through the case press it down but that contact goes up so that's why when the switch is up like that it's on a hook and when it's pressed pressed down like that it's off hook okay happy with that bit so far right so that's that's one little weird thing to uh, to talk about now the dial basically now just lifts off it's in a sort of plastic housing with legs on it in a trim foam and it just lifts up lift it at the front here at the bottom at the front lift those two feet out first then slide forwards because the other two feet again are slightly hooked on the bottom as you'll see and they go underneath that big circuit board there there's two circuit boards here one here and one here and they're on slightly different levels and that thing has to hook under one circuit board for its feet to fit into the case if it didn't hook under its feet wouldn't fit in the case so make sure that hooks under and then you'll find its feet fit in so the dial you can just take out like that and you don't have to have taken the finger wheel and things off the dial on a trim phone to get the case off it's much easier getting the case on and off than it is on a 706 or a 746 i just took it off because i know people wanted to see inside the dial okay right so we've done that now and i think what i'm going to do now is turn this around so you can see it better right so there it is there's the dial put the dial put the dial up there boy. right so now you can get a better idea of what's uh, what's happening right the line cord comes in here should have a special little grommet on it which will be pretty much impossible to get out without removing this circuit board you'll probably find you've got to remove this circuit board to get the to get that out of there um, but what else have we got in here right well we've got a real jumble of wires as you can see and if I just start to move some of these wires and get the jumble unjumbled a bit, you'll start to see what's going on. Now don't worry about this. This is just here. This is normal. And it's here basically because there isn't room to put it on the circuit board. But just leave it alone. Basically that. There's no need to go messing with that. And when you look at it these are the four wires that come from the handset yeah they are white red green and blue and if we look here we have the terminals T1 here to T9 here T10 here on the bottom row to T19 here and these terminals are wired exactly the same as on a 706 or a 746 and you convert a trim phone exactly the same way that you convert a 706 or a 746 so have a look at my video about converting those phones if you're not sure on how to do it or leave me a message in the comments if you're not sure on how to do it and I'll point you in the right direction but this one has already been converted so here is what's happened now 
we have got two back-to-back -back little diodes here this red thing that red thing actually has two diodes back to back in it and basically what that does is that stops acoustic shock so that stops any really loud noises getting transmitted down uh, down into the receiver and uh, into the earpiece so it doesn't deafen you or anything so that's that stops acoustic shock that's what that red thing does uh, sometimes they're black inside phones and sometimes they're not fitted at all but if you see one that's what it is and it's basically just two little diodes back to back right as you can see it's wired pretty much the same as a 706 or a 746 right we'll start by talking about the jumpers um, T1 doesn't have a jumper T2 doesn't have a jumper T3 doesn't have a jumper T4 and T5 have a 3.5 no 3.3 um, K resistor um, between them they would originally have had a jumper as phones are built for the old hardwired system um, but when we switch to the new wall sockets because there is a chance of more than one phone being used in the house you put a resistor in there basically into the bell circuit if, if it's got 500 ohm bells if it's got 2000 ohm bells you don't have to worry so much but if it's got the old 500 ohm bells or if it's up for 500 ohms you put a resistor in there now I know what you're thinking a trim phone doesn't have bells why does it still need the resistor that's a fairly good question but they always seem to have them so it doesn't do any harm for it to be there so a resistor there between one two three T4 and T5 now T5 to T6 that does have a jumper link in it T5 to T6 can you see that metal link there nothing to C7 no jumpers to T8 and no jumpers to T9 in fact there's no jumpers to any of the others until you get to T16 here and then T16, T17, T18 and T19 are all jumpered together they've all, they've all got these jumper um, connections to wire them together so 16, 17, 18 and 19 so the only places you have a jumper are between T5 and T6 and T16, T17, T18 and T19 they're the only places you have jumpers you have your 3.3k resistor between T4 and T5 and then the wiring is exactly as it would be in a 746 or a 706 so for your line cord your red goes to T8 your white goes to T18 your blue goes to T6 and your green which basically doesn't do anything at all goes to one of the unused terminals on the bottom I normally put it on T15 and this particular case it's on T14 but they're unused terminals anyway so you can put it on either of those because that green one doesn't do anything that green one in the line cord that uh, that becomes pointless so you don't even have to connect that one up if you don't want to you can uh, you can leave it disconnected if you like now I'm just looking at this to see if I can see how the circuit boards come out and I 
can't see a screw in it there's normally a screw or something in them and I can't see anything in this one as I said I've not actually had this phone apart so exactly how the circuit boards come apart is a bit of a a bit of a guess oh there's a screw in this one here look this board here there is a screw in the middle so I can take that screw out of the middle there can you see where that is take that screw out of there and then this board is loose and this has got the ringer and all sorts on it now you'll notice the ringer has got an off position it goes loud uh, medium soft or off I think that's actually a, a rising ring that I think it starts soft and gets louder I can have it loud all the time or soft or off sometimes this mechanism has a little screw in it which is this screw here I believe which is, on this particular one is partially unscrewed but if I screw that back down I need a thinner screwdriver than my uh, my 50p set so I'll resort back to these proper ones if I screw this back down you'll see what it does this is on the outside of the phone where the setting is and it gets to soft and then you can't turn it any further you can't turn the phone off yeah you can't turn the ring the ringer rather off not the phone but the ringer it'll only go as far as soft here it won't go to the off position because I've screwed that screw in and the reason for that is when you only had one phone on a house installation it was part of the rules from the GPO that it always had to be capable of ringing you couldn't have a phone on its own that was not capable of ringing if you had two phones in the house and the second one you could have that so you could switch the ringer off but there must always be one ringer in use and so that is uh, why that little screw is there so if I do undo that screw again part way you'll then find that I can turn it then to the off position there like that see I've undone that little screw there again and I can now turn it to the off position if I don't want it to ring so that is how that works so that's one little board as you can see it comes out like so and that's how that goes in and out a bit fiddly to get in but you just have to fiddle about with it until it goes back into place and lines up with that hole to put that screw back in and there we go now this one I'm not so sure how this comes apart I've got a feeling that you undo that that is the tube that that big long um, plastic screw through the case goes and fits in there and I have a feeling you have to unscrew that to get this board out but I'm not a hundred percent certain on that one and I'm not going to go messing about with it because it's got nothing to grab to unscrew it you'd have to do it with a pair of pliers or something it seems a bit strange that um, but yeah 
so I'm not going to go and do that at the minute. So we'll reassemble all this. So we took this back under these wires here, how it was, because that just lays across the top of the uh, terminals there. You'll sometimes find these wires wrapped around this a couple of times if they're particularly long just to sort of get them out of the way a bit but as you'll see neatness of wiring inside a trim phone is not great so that goes back like that the dial now if you wanted to do any work on the dial it just lifts out of this plastic housing like so if you wanted to work on the dial work on the contacts on the back there and there's your trim foam dial which it says on this particular one it says 30 and the dial is dated 1976 30 EMT EMT being the manufacturer so this is going to be a bit tricky because I've got to get these connections to that little gap down there in this plastic cover but do that like that and then remember you've got to get those feet these feet here under this uh, slightly raised circuit board so feet in push them underneath then drop the other feet in make sure they go right down into the base of the phone and your dial is back in place and that is where it sits and when it's all put together the theory is it can't lift out so we'll now take the uh, top again and remember what I said about the two little lugs under there so you've got to put that on at this end put it down like that get those lugs in place put the other end down there's no cut out for the line cord to go through in the top cover on a trim phone so you do that and then basically just do all this plastic screw again and there you go and that's it done up um, now the handset this is a bit of a law unto itself the handset on a trim phone but uh, we'll have a little look at it for you there's a screw in the end of the handset in there you see in the, the end that you put to your ear this screw may be covered up Some, sometimes the screws are covered up there is one in the bottom here in the bottom of the mouthpiece here there is a little screw underneath that but you will generally find a piece of plastic on there um, a piece of it's like clear rubber rather than plastic and what the idea of it is is when you hang the phone up like that it's to stop this plastic scratching on that piece of plastic it's like a little rubber foot but if you ping that out with something like a needle or something or a very small uh, screwdriver you ping that rubber thing out you'll find a screw underneath it just to get that end bit of the case off but you don't normally need to take that off because there's nothing in there because if I take this top screw out like so and give this a push and you have to sort of push it upwards a little bit to loosen it it reveals 
that both the microphone and the speaker for the handset are both in the top end of the trim phone which if you think about it is sensible because that's the wide end so you know that's the only place they'll fit and they are both in there and this is just held in by um, the fact it's a reasonably tight fit but when it's when it's put back together in place this spring holds it as well here and that's this spring is a spring clip which you take out and slide out so you can get that out which is actually the microphone so this one here is the speaker for your earpiece and that is the microphone for your mouthpiece that's why putting your hand over the mouthpiece of a trim phone doesn't work and when you reassemble this you have to do it that way up otherwise this falls out so you have to hold it that way up and then there's a little lip on here you can see where my thumb is there and you put that lip in there and then the other end on push it home into place hold it together put the screw back in I'm a bit out of focus I'm holding it too close to the camera put the screw back in like so and that's it back together again and remember for the dial it's a reverse of the taking it apart procedure so we put this on so it goes over those two those two pegs so it sits home flush within the case because remember those two pegs have got a little recess just underneath them where this hello there we're, we're back um, sorry about that we uh, we had a bit of a a bit of a technical issue there and all, all of a sudden the stream stopped uh, stopped working but we are back up and running again now so I had to reset my computer and things and we were just putting this dial back together weren't we and we just put the spring clip on I can now put the finger wheel back on engage it on those little pins in the middle of there and then find the screw obviously in the center put the screw back in Then put your dial label back in you can make a new one of course if you want to and then just press the label cover back into place and there you have it and that is how you do a trim foam right well thanks for watching this episode of Andy's Shed Live I'm sorry about the technical issues that we had there it all went a bit uh, went a bit wrong there for a moment but uh, I hope that didn't spoil your enjoyment of it too much and I hope you got the gist of how a trim foam can be taken apart and checked over and put back together again so until next time when we will be back with another episode of Andy's Shed Live it just remains for me to say thanks for watching and bye for now